What up, guys and ghouls? Welcome back to Fright Mike. And if you're new here, welcome to Fright Mike. I'm Sam. I'm Liz. And today we are continuing our theme for the month of October. It is Library of Horrors Month, all month long, over here at Fright Mike. And we're talking anthologies for the month of October because what fun is it to just pick a few horror stories when you can pick movies with a bunch of horror stories? Many. (laughs) I love to see it. You love to see it. You do love to see it. (laughs) This month we are bringing you a fun little uh, anthology movie. They, um, honestly there's three of them. Two of them are great, but we're talking about the first one here today. (laughs) It is 2012's VHS. All right, VHS came out in 2012, currently has a 5.8 out of 10 on IMDb. Uh, It has a 57% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it seems to be a little, you know, it's a little higher than average of the road. Yeah, Above average of the road. (laughs) Uh, Did I say average of the road? Of the road. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) On the road, it's a little higher than average. (laughs) Uh, this is my first time seeing VHS, shockingly. Um, and I feel like I've been recommended to watch it before, but I, like, just that never, never got around to it. What did, did, did it live up to the hype? It did. Are you um, glad you watched it? So, I mean, I know we do readings at the end. Uh, I'll, I'll say off the bat that I hated everyone in this movie. Oh, yeah, they all suck. <laughs> like, literally... Everyone in this movie sucks. Like, there's no, um, there's no, there's no one. (laughs) Yeah. But, which makes it kind of hard to enjoy to some extent. But, and you know, like, here's the thing about anthology movies. Um, I know because they're, like, short stories, it's hard to kind of, like, flesh out character development. So, like, that's not really the purpose of it. But it was, like, rough sometimes. Because I feel like they, we, we got a glimpse of, like, these horrible people doing horrible things, and then they die, and we're just like, okay. It seems right. So we don't have time to feel anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, that's, I don't know if this is a popular opinion or not, but I'm just gonna say it right here, right now. Um, I like VHS 2 better than VHS, because in a way, I feel like, um, well, I like the stories more. I think it's spookier. I think the, um, like, main storyline through, um, I think is spookier than these guys breaking in, who are, like you said, they're horrible people, and I feel like the second VHS has just, like, less, um, what is it, sexual assault? (laughs) Harassment? Yeah, it- there is a lot of sexual harassment in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Heavy on the sexual harassment. Yes. Something that makes me uncomfortable. I can deal with it a little bit, but something that is so heavy on that, like this movie, it does, t- it does make me a little uncomfortable, but I still think it's a good, like, it's a good horror watch regardless. Yeah, like, I enjoyed the stories. Yeah. And while I didn't necessarily love the characters, I like the ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? For sure. So, diving into this, uh, we're made to, it, it's made to feel like you are watching an old VHS tape. Like, uh, if you listen to our previous episode, we were kind of joking about, you know, the old VHS tapes that you found that, like, there's stuff recorded over stuff, recorded over stuff, and... This is kind of like that, so... I love a VHS tape, I know. I still collect them. The nostalgia. (laughs) So, we see, like, a bunch of, like, stuff. One of the things that we see is this group of guys who ends up being, like, part of our, like, through story. Um, They're in a parking garage, and they see a couple, and they follow them, and they harass this woman... Uh, and end up, like, lifting her shirt up, and they all, like, take turns, like, trying to, like, hold her and, like, get her shirt up, and it, it's just disgusting, to be honest. Um. We should also mention that this is, like, shot in found footage form. I don't know if we mentioned that. (laughs) Yeah, all of these are, like, found footage shot stories. So, basically from there, we see, like, a bunch of other little cuts of whatever, who cares? It's, like, garbage. Who cares? Um. Basically, it's all leading to these five guys. They're, they were told by someone 
that they have to break into this old man's house to collect a specific VHS tape. They would know it when they see it. They break in. Um, there's a room where we see the guy, the old man, he's dead. He's sitting in a chair. He's just chilling. Yeah. And he's, a, like, he's basically in a chair facing, like, a bunch of TVs, like, tube TVs. When and you can't decide what to watch. Exactly. Watch, watch it all. all. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all, like, staticky, and they basically, like, split up. And the one, the, the leader, I, I don't, I don't know any of their names, nor do I care. No. So the mustache guy, he's the leader <laughs> and he tells one of the cronies, he's like, yeah, wait in here. And there's a bunch of VHS tapes. Look and see if one of these looks important. So the guy pops in a VHS tape and that's how that all of the stories in this are basically tapes. So tape one is called Amateur Night. Um, so we see Clint. And the only reason I know any of these people's names, by the way, is because I had to look at IMDb. Because <laughs> I was just writing guy, other guy, the third like, guy. And it's, like, because it, they're so short, like, they're brief stories, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> yeah, it really, it truly really doesn't. <laughs> so Clint is given a pair of glasses that have a camera in them, and that is how this whole vignette plays out, is through the eyes of this, like, spy camera. But it's... It's Clint and his buddies going out. I think it's, like, Shane and Patrick. They're going out for a guy's night out on the town, uh, creeping at women at bars, being douchey. Yeah. So they end up at this bar, and they meet these two girls. I believe their names are Lisa and Lily. They're just all hammered. But straight off the bat, like, Clint kind of, like, is off to the side talking to the girl Lily who is spooky looking. <laughs> she looks like Grimes. <laughs> she is like I've, she has like really wide eyes. Um it kind of looked already from this point like her face was like there was like a line going down her face. Like she had a real veiny forehead. Real veiny forehead, but just like very like ghoulish. I kept I kept like Thinking that it, maybe it was my brain or just me being tired, but I was like, are her eyes getting bigger and bigger the longer that the camera is on, which made her even, like, spookier? Because it's one of those things where, like, they're drinking, um, so they can't tell, like, you know, it's like one of those, you, you, you lose kind of, like, perception. It's like watching someone's drunken Snapchat story. <laughs> yes. But, like, yeah, her eyes are so big that it's, it's almost supernatural looking like it's yeah. almost to the point where you're like that's fake and they're already like, like they already make it look hazy yeah the whole night because it, like i said it's found footage and the camera w that we're seeing is on a drunk guy so he's stumbling around they literally show him like holding beer and like knocking it all over the place and, like through mirrors and stuff yeah and it, it, it's just like a hot mess but they end up bringing the two of them the, the two girls back to the ho their hotel room where Shane is trying to get with Lisa um, but she ends up passing out so he gets really pissed off but it's really weird because they're all in the same hotel room and they're all kind of watching and it's just fucking weird um, but I think it's cute that like the whole time Lily is like super like sweet on Clint and she just keeps going I like you that's, like, the only I thing she you. says. Yes. He's, like, trying to talk to her, even in his drunken state, and she, that's the only thing that she says. But she's just so creepy about it, because it's, like, she doesn't even blink when she looks at him. Yeah. So. She's just weird. <laughs> so, like, at this point, um, yeah, Lisa's passed out. Shane, like you said, he gets pissed. Patrick is just on the couch, like, I don't know, giving off, like, super douchey, like, rapey <laughs> vibes. Like, he's just, like, watching, and... Lily is very uncomfortable with him. Like, there are several times throughout the night where she, like, hisses at him or, like, tells him no, like, because he tries to approach. Because at this point, Shane has turned his interest on to her. And it's, like, super awkward because he's like, dude, get this on tape. So, of course, he's undressing her. Um, but we see, like, her legs are all, like, like almost, like, scaly and veiny. And Clint's like, whoa. Yo, like, look at this. <laughs> yeah. Um... Patrick then tries to approach for, like, a threesome while they make out, and that's when Clint goes into the bathroom. Because he's having some, like, wild side effects from all the drug and alcohol usage <laughs> that's going on. So, um, 
he's in the bathroom and all of a sudden Patrick just barges in with a bloody hand saying that Lily got like out of control and bit his hand. And so he's just like, and he's like, mind you, he's like running around naked around this hotel room. Yeah. You see his peen. <laughs> a lot of peen. Yuck. No thanks. <laughs> But they both step out of the bathroom, and they can see Lily, who's still on top of Shane, going, like, full demon. Yeah, she's, like, th- she's like clawing at him. She has, like, big old fang teeth. Um, so they're basically hiding from her. <laughs> and, yeah, so she, they see, they kind of, like, show shots of them going, peering into the room, and then going back into the bathroom, and then peering in, out into the room. And she's just, like, devouring Shane on the bed. She is going to town on him. She is going full Jennifer's body on him. It is wild. And I love how they're in the bathroom. So they're locked in the bathroom and they're like, what do we do? What do we do? So Patrick decides to take the shower curtain rod out to <laughs> to beat her with it. So he tries to approach her and she just like pounces on his ass. Because <laughs> he gets one good swing in there and she, <laughs> she all but is like, you hit like a bitch. <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, it's lights out for Patrick. So Patrick gets eaten. Um, And then we, but we see Clint kind of falls over on the floor, but we see the, like, you know, he's like looking at what's happening. And at this point we realize that Lily's almost like a vampire because she's just like draining Patrick. She's a succubus. <laughs> she's a succubus. Yeah. She's a succubus. A succubus. A succubus. <laughs> she's just drinking his blood. So while she's busy doing all that, uh, Clint ends up running off and... <laughs> Wait, before that, before he runs, she rips his dick off. Oh, that's right. I yes. forgot about that. She's like, you don't need this anymore. Oh my fucking Pretty God. boy Patrick ain't so pretty anymore. I mean, he was ugly anyway, let's be honest. But yeah, so, so. <laughs> I don't know one of those movies pretty. But, yeah, uh, that's true. Yes. So, <laughs> peen be damned. Clint <laughs> runs off. Ends up falling down the stairs and breaks his wrist, which looks really gnarly. That's so... Oh, man. You see the bone. And they just show it for so long. Yee. That pandering shot on that pure white bone. He is, like, laying there for a while. Like, he... I don't know. He, like, had some speed behind him, and he got a little bit ahead, but the second he busted his wrist, he was just kind of sitting there. Oh, and then it's creepy because he kind of peers up at the stairs... And we see Lily, like, kind of crawling there. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I hate shit that crawls. Yeah, so Lily catches up to him. And she's kind of, like, approaching him with her whole, I like you. I like you. And uh, after he's kind of just like, nah, man. She feels rejected and kind of throws, like, a fit. So while she's fitting, (laughs) (laughs) um, Clint runs off again. And this time he kind of, like, runs into, um, uh, like, more people in the parking lot that are coming in. And so he's, like, almost to another person. And then all of a sudden we just see him getting, like, swept off of his feet, basically, and carried through the air. And we see shots of him looking up at Lily, who is now full succubus. Full, <laughs> full succubus. <laughs> She has wings. She's like she gargoyle is, woman. <laughs> yes, she is. Dare I say charred looking? Like yeah. she, she looks like she came straight from hell. Yeah, she is rough looking, yeah. and she's carrying him through the night sky. Um, and then his glasses fall off, so we see the like the glasses falling to the ground, and uh, that's it. Yeah, I don't know why Lily reminds me so much of that. Um, that like D Ant Ward song, which is like, I think you're freaky and I like you. I <laughs> <laughs> because she keeps saying it over and over again. It's the I only like thing you. she says. I like you. Uh, yeah, so that's that story. We are back in the room with the dead guy since the tape has ended, and the guy that sat down to watch the tape is gone. Spooky. We cut to a shot of two of the guys in the basement, so we're there with mustache. Dan and <laughs> whatever his name is and uh they find piles of tapes so the mustache guy's like fuck it we'll take them all uh and then the guy filming he goes to find a container to put them in and he sees like we see like an old man like briefly like skulking around and 
the other guy like doesn't believe him he's like dude whatever so upstairs in the room with the old man another one of the cronies sits down and plops in another vhs tape this one now is called second honeymoon where we see couple sam and stephanie it looks like they went out west for like a second honeymoon vacay and they end up finding this like kind of fortune teller machine which tells Stephanie that she's going to be visited by a loved one. Yes. So later that night, they're back at their hotel room, and Sam tries to film her undressing. Which, okay. So when they when she gets her, like, fortune, um, it says, like, you know, it's a happy... Re- it's, it's something, like, a turn of events will bring a happy reunion with a loved one. But it also says, don't take advantage of people or like don't let people take advantage of your trusting nature which immediately foreshadowing exactly because i didn't the first time i saw this i don't even think the second time i saw this i picked up on that but this time i noticed because then yeah he's trying to film her and like get her to do stuff on camera and she's like nah man yeah clearly (laughs) uncomfortable she's like i will do that if you put the camera away and he won't do it and the only thing that interrupts them is a knock at their hotel room door it looks like sam's face (laughs) <laughs> swallowed his mouth yes <laughs> it's a very small mouth, <laughs> a <giant> mouth. Face. <laughs> that's all i kept thinking but yeah <laughs> he hasn't grown into his mouth like some of us have aka me <laughs> <laughs> so um they're doing whatever they're doing and there's a knock at the door so they don't show this it's kind of like off camera but they talk about it later in the tape because um Stephanie asks him what happened and he basically said this like creepy weird chick like was banging on the door and asked if they she could get a ride with them tomorrow and he was like nah but he said that she was like giving off weird vibes yeah he said like she was like a college age girl and there was nothing he didn't felt he didn't feel like she, like he, she could take advantage, yeah, like, threatened, but he said he felt, like, spooked by her. Like, there was something just off about her. She was skulking. And we see Stephanie, like, latch the door, like, eh, yeah, no. That latch don't stop nobody, though, because uh, in the middle of the night, we see the camera, well, a camera is picked up and filming the couple. So they got, like, t- it's a room with two twin size beds, so they both sleep in separate beds. And it first films Sam... And, well, no, I think it films uh, Steph at first, and then it's, like, kind of going down her body, kind of lifts, I don't know, it lifts up her shirt. Yeah, and then there's, like, a switchblade that they pop out, this camera person, and it's, like, running it along her skin, Uh, but then ultimately she's unharmed, moves over to Sam, films him, then goes over to his wallet, steals the money from his wallet, puts it back, goes into the bathroom, takes his toothbrush. <laughs> the ultimate revenge. <laughs> yeah, swirls it around in the toilet. So, like, because at first you're thinking, oh, it's that girl. But then you're, fe- like, is there a motive? Because he doesn't know the girl at the door. Obviously this person has a vendetta against Sam because it's doing that with all his shit. Um, but that's all we see at night. And then it's the next morning. They're out and about. And he accuses Steph of taking money and he's like he's like really shitty about it too because he's like well it wouldn't be the first time that you wanted to you know like treat yourself uh and then they like they go out and about for the day i think they go to the grand canyon it's kind of a pointless shot you know it's like who cares they go hiking (laughs) exactly they come home they go to bed again we get another camera shot um in night vision uh only this time (laughs) we (laughs) Sam is completely, like, I mean, just mutilated. He, his neck, I mean, it's stabbed multiple times. There's, like, a cut across the throat, and it's kind and of, the like... gurgles. Yeah, the <laughs> blood curdles. Um, It's kind of, like, sh- it, the shots go back and forth between, like, the brutal slaying of Sam in bed, and you just see, like, bloody hands and, like, in the bathroom sink, and they're trying to wash the blood off the knife, and all of a sudden... We're in the bathroom, and we see in... So, some like, this person picks up the camera, and we see in the reflection of the mirror, it is another girl. It's the one who knocked on the door. And Steph 
and they start to make out. But we never see the the girl's face. She's, like, wearing a mask. Yes. But she takes it off to, like, Mac on Steph. And then the next shot is them driving away in a car. And it's Steph who's on the camera. And she says, did you delete it? Or did you delete the footage? Ooh. So it was planned the whole time. She was time. in on it the whole damn time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Visited by a loved one. I like this one. The fortune foretold. I know. I love this one. So Uh, back in the house with all the creeps running around. (laughs) With the cronies. Yes. uh, The guy watching the tape is gone. But also the dead guy is also gone. (laughs) So everyone's just like disappearing at this point. (laughs) But we do go to our next tape entitled Tuesday the 17th. Which happens to be... After Friday the 13th. Hey. Did you know that? <laughs> hey. But similarly, uh, four friends go away to um, this girl Wendy's, like, hometown in the woods. She basically just says that they're they're going away because no one ever kind of goes in this area. And it's, like, a nice little getaway. Um, we see them kind of in the car just talking, and then the next thing we know that they're walking around the forest or woods aimlessly looking for, I don't know what, a cabin? I don't think it ever says, because, They're like, just, like, walking around. Yeah. Because, because the one girl is, like, where are we even looking for? Like, yeah. She even points it out. And, like, Wendy is just, like, super vague about everything. She's like, oh, yeah, I, I, I used to come up here when I was little, um, she kind of starts to tell about, like, um, like, an event that happened in her childhood, and she's kind of, like, trying to rehash it and get over the trauma of it. They're just aimlessly wandering, and at one point, she tells one of the guys, I think his name is Joey, she just says, you're all gonna fucking die out here. And yeah. he's like, cool. So she, yeah, like, Wendy is being super fucking weird. And she ends up telling them, um, about this story of these kids that were murdered by this, like, base, I like I don't even entity. know, like, this entity. <laughs> yeah, because she could never prove that he existed. And she says, the strange, thing, the strange thing is, I don't remember what he looks like. And then laughs. So they all think she's joking. So Joey is like, all right, fuck this. I'm going to go for a swim. Meanwhile, the other guy, um, Spider. Is Who eats name? a spider at one point, I'm pretty Aww. sure. Sick. spider and then the other girl samantha they kind of wander off and um he's trying to get with her but it doesn't really go anywhere because while she's like talking to him out of nowhere there's like a camera glitch and spider's holding the camera at this point and he looks over and out of nowhere a knife just goes right through her eye <laughs> from behind from behind so he pans the camera over and again, there's like this camera glitch, but it's like you can see a figure of a person. It's kind of staticky, but you can see a figure of a man. And so he tries to run away, but then he gets knocked down and just complete his head gets completely obliterated by a knife. Yeah, just it's hacked brutal. to pieces by this like entity. And like we see the killer, but we never fully see him because he is always like glitched out. Yeah. And, uh, from there, we go back with Wendy. Well, she finds the camera. And the camera even has, like, blood on the lens. Mm -hmm. And she walks it back to where Joey is by the lake. And she's like, do you want to fuck me? (laughs) I don't know why. She's like, yeah, do you want to fuck me or what? And he's like, what? And she's like, yeah, like, why don't we just just fuck? Fuck each other's brains out. Let's fuck. I don't know why she says it so much. And he's like, um okay no but like that story that's true right about the murders the four kids that were killed and the killer was insane and she was like yeah he was evil the river was red with blood and basically you find out she came back to prove that she wasn't crazy and she used all of them as bait to draw the killer out and while she's explaining this to him the camera glitches again and she's still holding it towards joey So from behind, we see a figure kind of slowly approaching him. He doesn't realize it. And um, then it slices his throat. (laughs) 
It's brutal. So Ren- Wendy runs off with the camera, and the guy, the killer, is now following her. Everything is kind of staticky and glitchy at this point, but we're still kind of just running through the forest with her. And Wendy kind of points the camera at her face and says, basically, like, gives out a warning, like, if anyone is planning on coming here, don't. <laughs> yeah. Um. So... At one point, she, so after that, she's still running. Um, she has him on camera, but she screams like, "Why can't I film you?" So, it it's just crazy because she said, you know, like earlier, she's like, "I don't even remember what he looks like." So it's just wild. But at one point, she thinks that she beat the killer because she's like, "I came back and I beat you." It's very reminiscent of Creepshow Two with the you know the pond thing, um, but then. He, because he's a glitchy killer, he glitches up behind her, pounces on her, and literally guts her. Literally. Like, just... Graphically. Yes. <laughs> pulls all of her inside. I got Slenderman out. vibes from this one. Yeah, I think definitely. it's the glitchy and the, like, slow approach. Yeah. It, it is cool, though. Like, it's called Tuesday the 17th. It's obviously, like, a, you know, an homage to Friday the 13th. It's got the camp setting... But it's also cool because you get, you know, Jason was, like, a supernatural killer. You know, he was always in multiple places at once, you know, whatever. Just kind of appearing wherever. Same thing with this killer. But, yeah, I definitely, I definitely smell what you're stepping in with the uh, Slender Man (laughs) vibes, too. (laughs) That is so true. So we cut back to our cronies, still in the house. um, But the guy who was now watching that tape disappears Meanwhile, the old man reappears in the chair. But now we see a different guy put a tape in. And, I mean, these... I don't even know how... Like, in the beginning, I lost track of who was who because it didn't matter. Yeah. But at this point, I'm like, how many guys are there in this house? I think there's two... I think there's two guys left. By this point, there's yes. two left. It's the mustache guy and then his bitch. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's he throws on another tape. And this one is called The Sick Thing That Happened to Emily When She Was Younger. So it opens with a woman named Emily video chatting her boyfriend James, kind of like talking about how she thinks that her new apartment might be haunted. And he's like, ooh, love that for you. Yeah, he's kind of just like a skeptical bean. (laughs) Um, She also talks about how this bump in her arm that she's had is really bothering her. Yeah, and he's, like, a med student, so he keeps saying, like, I'll take a look at it when I see you, but she's just kind of, like, trying to, like, talk to him about the fact that she's been hearing noises, and so we kind of cut to, like, different conversations that they're they're having over the course of God knows how like long. several <laughs> days? Yeah. Weeks, maybe? And we cut to her, like, wandering around in her dark apartment, and... All of a sudden, you know, and I don't know why her, she has, like, no lights. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But she's wandering around her dark apartment with James still on the camera, and she runs into a ghost kid who kind of, like, creeps up behind her. And then we cut to another day of them talking during the daytime, um, and the lump is getting worse, and... She's just hearing more and more noises, and she ends up seeing another ghost kid. <laughs> the go- the, sh- the first shot of the ghost kid, though, like, when he rushes past yeah. her and shuts the door, it's creepy. It is, because it's almost like a night vision kind of thing. Yeah, and it, it happens so quick. Um, but yeah, that every time you see a ghost kid, it's never, <laughs> it's never great. It's yeah. never great. It's always spoopy. So, um, by this point, there's another daytime shot of Emily... She's now, so she's kind of talking to James about how her arm is still bothering her, and then she, like, kind of pans down to her arm, and she's completely, like, cut it open by this point, and she's like, I think there's something moving in my arm, and she's, like, hacking away at her own arm and, like, digging in it. <laughs> it looks brutal. It reminds me so much of the ruins when that girl's oh, like, it's yeah. in me, and she's, like, just completely ripped herself open. Yeah. Yeah. She's, and he's just like, what are you doing? What are you nuts? Like, you're going to get an infection. Go clean up after yourself. Oh, my God. Ugh. It's so it's so gnarly looking. Um, but, yeah, so we get another call at night. She's hearing the noises again. She grabs some scissors to protect herself while she investigates. Um, and she, 
this never works in horror movies. This is always a bad idea. She grabs a camera, like a Polaroid camera, and she's going to use the flash for light. That Mm -hmm. never fucking works. Except in your next. (laughs) True. True. But that bitch was badass. Oh, she she didn't need that camera. (laughs) No, she did not. She she needed her two fists and her two boots to shove up someone's ass. That is it. So, she's taking pictures. Um, He's like, I don't see anything. And the last flash we see, there's two children. Um, And it's like... A boy and a girl. Uh, yes. And it's, like, super... I feel like it's, like, super washed out. Yeah, or maybe they're it's like really creepy because their, like, eyes are very glowy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so they're, like, super weird. And she... Like, they knock her unconscious. And um, James then appears in the room. So he had told her... So the, the, the whole setup was that James was in Michigan. And he, you know, she was like, Oh, you know how I got, got sick when I was little when you were away. Um, so he appears... And he slices down, like, her back, and he pulls out, like, this fetus thing. Yeah. And he asks these, like, alien ghost kids, like, how many times are you going to do this to her, or will this happen to her, before no more grow? And, like, what's with the tracking device? Like, does that thing have an expiration? He was in like, on it all along. Exactly. He's like, she thinks I'm in Michigan. You know how hard it is to keep this shit up? Like... Oh my god. So then he kind of, he's like, well, I gotta, I, I gotta prepare the body. So he goes to, like, break her arm. To and make it look like an accident. Exactly. <laughs> and he realizes the camera's on, so he shuts it off. And the, the next day, we see Emily, who's all banged up. She's got a black guy. Her arm's in a sling. And she's, like, telling James that the, oh, James, that doctor that you recommended says that I have a mild form of schizophrenia, so that explains why I've been seeing the ghosts and why I don't remember running into the street in front of a car. So they basically staged a whole car accident for her. (laughs) Very elaborate. (laughs) Yes, and so obviously we're led to believe that this has been happening to her her whole life because, you know, of the conversation earlier. Um, But then, but then, (laughs) as if James wasn't a scumbag enough, James then is on a call with another woman who now has a sore spot on her arm and is talking about a bump. The cycle continues. Ugh. I got questions. <laughs> they won't be answered. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. What's your questions? <laughs> the backstory. This is the only one of these that I really want a backstory for. Yeah. Because why? It's crazy. Most of all. It's crazy. <laughs> so uh so james is the worst (laughs) yeah he's a fucking scumbag because he's just in it for the titties excuse me for my yawning (laughs) but uh in it for the titties mm -hmm. oh yeah because that's the thing he makes everyone show their titties i don't know but uh enough about that that's like every guy in this movie though (laughs) yeah that's true that's what i'm saying it's a lot of like rapey vibes and sexual assault and just like meh it's weird um Cut back to the cronies. Yes. So now our fourth crony out of the five is missing. And the old man is also gone again. The mustache guy. He does a lot of walking around for a dead guy. He does. (laughs) More than I do when I'm alive. (laughs) He hears footsteps. He finds his one crony's headless body. And then he sees the old man alive. Alive in the doorway. And well. Yes. He's looking rough. So mustache guy runs away. And then we see he is attacked by the old man who has like a zombie face now. Mm-hmm. It's creepy. Yeah. But then we still get a last story. We do get a last story. I don't know who's watching this tape. Because <laughs> there know. ain't nobody left besides the old zombie man. Maybe he threw one at last one last tape. In. Yeah, maybe he's he's his job's done now. He's gonna unwind. This Our, one is called 1031, 1998. 1998. Gonna party like it's 1998. So we meet up with our friends Chad, Matt, Tyler, and Paul. Oh shit! I didn't know they had names. Oh, they have names. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, but they got names. They're going to a Halloween party at some stranger's house. So, they pull up to this, like, pretty cool-ass-looking mansion. It's old and creepy-looking. And 
they walk in with all their booze and there's nobody around and they're like, where is this party happening? I have to say, mm. though, this one is probably the coolest uh, camera perspective because they're all in costume and the whole reason we're seeing this on film is because one guy is dressed up as a teddy bear <laughs> holding a video <laughs> camera. He says he's a nanny cam. Nanny cam. I thought that was so that was funny. Clever. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, uh, like you said, there's no one at this house. Um, there's where, they're, and they even say, like, 50 times, where the party at. <laughs> yeah. So, they're just kind of, like, want, they, first of all, they had to, like, walk to several doors to get into this house, but they find out, like, they get in, and then they're just kind of wandering, and they're like, wow, this is the worst haunted house ever, because we see, like, one, like, the whole house is empty. There's one room, has, like, flickering lights. Um, but then it's creepy because the guy with the camera, he sees this face kind of emerge from the back of, like, a curio cabinet. And then he turns around and a girl emerges, like, by the stairway, but then, like, disappears back into the shadow. Glitchy ghost. It's creepy. More glitchy people. And then the other guys, they're all like, oh, my God, we swear to God, these hands just came out of the walls. I don't know how they did it. It's crazy. So, they're kind of creeping around the house some more, and they go upstairs, where there's, like, an attic access in a bathroom. I'm telling you, man, secret passageways, I need to live in this house. Well, it makes me think that the house is old, because that oh, makes yeah. me think of, like, a Prohibition-style situation. <laughs> yes, or Clue. But I have to say, before they find that, did you, or did you not get creeped out by the part where he's in that room? And he sees that woman sitting on, like, the dresser oh, in the I mirror, know. turns around, she's not there. I did not like that at oh, all. <laughs> I hated it. I hate, I hate that for them. Ugh. But yeah. yes, so we're in the attic via Prohibition Stairs. Where they hear chanting going on. And they kind of think that it's all part of some act, like, in this Halloween party that they still think is somehow happening, even though it's just a bunch of dudes. And there's a, in the middle of their little circle, is a girl who is chained up and screaming for her life. And these guys still think it's part of the act, so they begin chanting with them. Well, these guys now notice that these other guys are here, and they're like, you need to get out of here. And because they start attacking them, the guys now snap out of it and realize, oh, this is, like, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. But then it's creepy because then one of the chanting guys, he gets, like, hoisted up in the air by some invisible force. So they know shit is, like, beyond fucked. And they they go to Escapi. Uh, but then they, like, they get a conscience. Because they're like, well, we can't leave. Because okay, they can still the hear girl. the girls screaming. Yeah. They're, like, halfway out the door and they're like, no, we can't leave. So they run all the way back up to the attic to get the girl. And they do get her. But, like, on their way out, another guy is, like, hoisted up at mm -hmm. the ceiling. And this, this, and then with this shot, we get a more, like, a close-up shot of, like, what's going on. Yeah. So it's cool because they, when they were making their exit, nothing was holding them back. Nothing was stopping them. Nothing was after them. But then they get the girl. And then the whole way out. We do see what the guys were talking about. There's hands emerging from the floor. It's like from the, the house walls. comes alive almost. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very, like, Amityville horror. Like, all the claims that they made, you know? Yeah. So, like, we see there's, like, ghost handprints on the walls. I mean, basically, the, the fucking house is, like, bleeding at the, like, and there's this weird, like, gray cloud that keeps following them i feel like that's making the stuff happen plus they go to reach for the door handle and it like disappears and like the windows start closing yeah i forgot about everything's like warping everything is like warping it's like almost like the house is like kind of almost like it well everything's definitely moving but it's almost like it's like going in on itself they end up running down to um this creepy <laughs> creepy ass looking attic the cellar the cellar and uh, the cloud that, like, you described is following them. And they end up finding kind of, like, a, another, like, tunnel-y thing and with a ladder that they can crawl out of. And they just barely get out. <laughs> yeah. But they get out with the girl. They do they get out with out. the girl. And they, uh, they get in their car and they're driving and they're trying to ask her questions and keep her awake She's and like alert. She's, like, hysterical. Um, but then the car stalls. And then the girl disappears 
from the inside of the car. And then reappears outside of the car, screaming. In a demon face? <laughs> yeah. In a demon scream. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what the hell's going on? They can't control the car anymore. They've stalled. The windows are locked. The doors are locked. They can't do anything. And they realize that they are stuck on a train track. <laughs> Which is funny, because when they're on their way to the party, they get stopped by a train. Yeah. And they're like, come on! And now they're stopping the train. Yep. Oh, well, they're so, not because it plows right into their car. That's right. Rest in pieces. Boys. <laughs> Boys. Uh, so that is... The end. That's the end. That's VHS. That's all she wrote. Yeah. All we watched. What What was your favorite story? Uh, ooh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What's yours? Um, I think mine was either Tuesday the 17th or Second Honeymoon, just because it's so brutal. I love the backstabbing. I was going to say, I did really like Second Honeymoon. Um, Amateur Night was a little too creepy for me. Like, creepy, like, gross creepy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I like you. And, yeah, I like a good revenge. Yeah. You love I like a good it. revenge story. Especially. Yeah. I'd say Second yeah. Honeymoon. Right. That's a solid one. That's a solid choice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a least favorite? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let's hear it. Uh it's the uh the Emily one. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I didn't love that. I me basically cuz I got questions. Right. It I'm was not, so random. I'm not a big alien person. I feel like I said this on the podcast before. So for you to bring some supernatural sci-fi alien shit and not really explain it. Like you said, I question the questions are abound. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, What's your overall rating? My overall rating uh, is going to be a three out of five for me because oh, I do enjoy it. I like watching it around Halloween, but see, I I struggled with this too because I originally gave it a two point five out of five because I like VHS two better, but I like VHS more than a three out or vhs2 more than a three out of five okay you know and i still appreciate like when it's good it's good like i like amateur night i like tuesday the 17th i like second honeymoon it's just really kind of like the like i said in the beginning like the the sexual harassment yeah Eh. what is your unwarranted and unwanted (laughs) um i gave it a two out of five (laughs) i mean yeah which sounds low But, like, like I said, I enjoyed the movie, um, like, the ideas of it, but I don't love the people in it, which took, and I, I, I try not to do that. Like, I try to say, like, if I don't like the characters, like, I don't want it to take away from the whole movie, but because there's so many characters and so many different, like, storylines going on, like... I don't know, I just, maybe I just needed a little bit of backstory before all of them, because they're just, like, they got killed to be killed, and I mean, I guess that's fine. I mean, they it's an anthology, and they only have so much time, but, yeah, like, I just didn't care for them, and that took so much away from me. But I do like the ideas for the stories. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you see VHS 2, I'm telling the you. sequel. <laughs> Let me know. I want to know. People out there who've seen the VHS <laughs> movies, do you like VHS 2 better than VHS like I do? Or do you like the first one better? Because I'm genuinely curious. I think the second one is far superior. I'll have to watch the second one. You do. You need to watch it and you need to tell me. And the third. <laughs> because there is a, there is an alien one in the second one and I actually like it. What Ooh. does that tell you? <laughs> it's great. <Rachel. laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, I think that's going to do it for us here at Fright Mike. Wrap it up another anthology episode. Let us know what you think of VHS. I want to know if you like this one more than the second one, if you've seen the second one. I want to know what your favorite story is. Because I feel like everyone is different. I mean, they're all... Interesting. They're all interesting. Yeah, I won't say good. I'll say interesting. They're different. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can find us at uh, on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, uh, what is it at? Fright Mike Podcast. Fright Mike Podcast. And if you want more extra spooky content, you can also find us over on Patreon. 
uh, Liz and I did upload our um, Halloween essentials, so you can listen to that on Patreon. Get in the spooky season. Yes, if you want to find out what we think is, like, you know, you can watch it any time, but it is essential to spooky season. It is. Um, And then, you know, we wouldn't mind if you left us a review. Five stars only. No. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can leave that um, if you'd like, wherever you download your podcast, wherever reviews are available, we would appreciate it. Yes. But and, in, um, yeah. yeah. Until next time, I'm Sam. I'm Liz. Rest, Rest in peace. peace.